This is using app script to bold different words in the same cell without losing the existing formatting. And that last part is what makes this important. This was actually inspired by this question on the actual product forums. Jennifer asked bold specific words within cell using app script. And the issue she was having is she has this script that every time she runs it, she puts in which word or phrase from the text she wants to bold. And it was doing that but it was not st uh, saving the existing bolds from the previous runs. So let me show you an example. I have this spreadsheet, super simple. I just have this text in cell A1, these three words. The first time she runs it, she wanted to bold the word these. The second time she bolds it, runs it, she wants to bold the word words, and she wants it to look like this. But instead, it looked like this where it was only bolding the newest request. So I'm gonna run through this twice, once showing how to just bold stuff, super simple, and then second showing the trick to be able to bold stuff or format stuff in any way and retain existing formatting. So let's go into app script. And this we're just gonna run directly from the, the window here. We're not gonna run that from uh, an edit or an open so I can name this whatever I want I'm gonna name it bold stuff really straightforward now a few things a few variables I need to set first I need I want to do the spreadsheet itself and then I want to do or actually this is the spreadsheet container the spreadsheet application and then I want to get the sheet we're working on Then I want to make a constant of bold. This is how we're actually going to apply the formatting because in order to make these kind of formattings in Google Apps Script, you have to create this variable that has the formatting or the styling inside of it. So it's going to be sh, our spreadsheet app, dot new text style. And in here we have several options, set bold, font family, font size, color, italics, strike through, underline, all of these are valid. We're just doing bold for these purposes. Set bold true, and then build. This actually sets it. Now the range I'm working in is just cell A1. I could do A1, but normally when I'm working in app script, I prefer to do row and column numbers. I'm not going to get the value right now. Oftentimes we do, this time we don't. I'm just getting the range right now. Down here, I'm going to set our val equals range dot. Normally here, we would also do dot get val. I'm not doing get value. I wanna do get rich text value because that's where we have styling. That's where we have formatting and styling within the cell. So get the rich text value, which actually doesn't immediately have the text in it. For that we need to do get rich text value dot get text. We're not going to get that yet because I want to have the rich text value isolated that we can work with. All right. Now for my search value, what are we looking for? Let search val equals these. So that's the first thing we're going to bold is the word these. What I'm going to do is create a new val a new variable for our rich text value that we're putting out. So I have one rich text value coming in and I'm going to have another one going out. Let out val equals sh dot new rich text value. You can't just create these in the cell. You actually have to create the rich text value first and then set it to the cell. New rich text value. We're going to set the text first and then we're gonna set the text style after. Set text is our val dot get text. That's how we're gonna go about getting the correct text in there. All right, now I want to set the bold that we, that we created. And again, we're looking for the word these, this first word here. First word here, there we go. So now that I've made my rich text value, this out val, 
I want to set the style. So outval dot set text style. And here, let's move that down so we can actually see the tooltip. Great. So set text style, I need the starting where it where where we're going to start in the string, where we're going to end in the string, and then what text style to apply. So let's actually come up here and create a new variable called let start equals rval dot get text dot index of search val. So this will tell us where in this value in our in the string, where in this string the search value occurs. Great. So let's do set text style is going to start at start. For the ending number, that's going to be start plus search val dot length. Right, because if it starts at six and it's a word that's four characters long, then it's going to end at ten, and that's what we want. Then the text style is bold. This thing we declared up here. Now I'm going to set this out to the spreadsheet, to the sheet. And that's going to be range.offset. I want to go down one row and I want to stay on the same column. Set rich text value. Again, everything we're doing here is in rich text values. I can't just do set value. Set rich text value equals outval.build. That's important to include the build. You could do it up higher. I think you can do it here. But this way it ensures that everything we are done adding everything to this value before we build it and set it. Great. So get the spreadsheet, get the sheet, create the styling we're going to use. Get the range, get the rich text value from that range. Here's my search value. Here's where that search value is found within the text. Here's the new rich text value that I'm going to be setting out. That rich text value, we're applying bold to this search value. And then I'm going to set that one row lower. Let's save it. Come back here so we're in the right spot. And run it. It's going to ask me for permissions. Since this is a pop-up, you can't see this on your end. I'm just choosing my account, clicking on advanced, clicking on the project, and then clicking allow. Now that I've authorized it, it runs the execution, says it's complete. Come back here and we can see it did exactly that. These three words, we asked it to find the word these and bold it. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and say that we start at row two, column one. So this is starting at A2 instead of A1. It's still gonna offset down and I'm gonna look for the word words. And run it. So here's what I was showing. Here's what I was talking about earlier. These three words, these three is now not bolded and words is bolded, but we wanted is this. So let's go back to the code and see why this happened. Coming back to the script. So we made this out value have the text from our val dot get text. And then we applied bolding to the search value. But if we notice nothing in here gets the styling from our val. And that's the important piece that this is missing. All right. We're only getting the text so far, not the styling. Unfortunately, we cannot do something as wonderfully nice as outval.setTextStyle rval.getTextStyle. That would be great. It doesn't quite work that way because it's for the entire value. It just, it, it doesn't work the way that we would want it to. I tried it, it doesn't. So what we need to work with is a concept called runs. So let me come up here, rval, move this down so we'll be able to see the tooltip, rval.getruns. 
This is a super important concept to understand for this entire th this entire proposal to make any sense. So get runs returns the rich text string split into an array of runs, wherein each run is the longest possible substring having a consistent text style. That's a lot of words. Let's go see what that means. So we're going to use the same one, these three words. This cell has one run. That run is these three words because there is a consistent text style across the entire, that entire string, right? Nothing about any of these words is different. This has two runs, these and three words. expand this out so we can see it better. This cell, A3, has three runs. These three words. Now this is true across as many substrings as possible. So if I had something annoying <laughs> like TH bold E bold S italicize E three words. All right. This has a bunch of runs. T H E S T H R E E space W. Nope, not space W. The space is there. Then this is underlined and italicized, W-O-R. And then this is underlined, italicized, and bold, D-S. I hope that's obvious why there's all these different runs in here, because every time we change text style, we change the run. That's what we're looking at. So what we need to do is get the runs, get the runs from this text value, or from the rich text value and then apply the style from each of those runs into our new value. So let's do let runs equal rval dot get runs. I suppose I could have used the one down here, but I didn't. Everything here is going to stay the same, stay the same, stay the same. We still need to get the search val from the start and declare our new variable. But when this changes is here for let i in runs. So for each of the substrings for, or what it said, it said for it returns an array, right? Returns the rich string set into an array of runs. So we're going to use that array and loop through each element in that array. And in each element of that array, I want to apply that styling for that piece of text into our new value. So for each element in runs, out val dot set text style. We're going to start this as runs i. So this instance dot get start index. We're going to end at runs i dot get end index. And the textile is runs i dot get textile. So now for each of our substrings, for each of the pieces that are broken up into different styles, it's going to first apply those existing styles. And then here, it's going to apply the new style that we want. It could probably go in the reverse order, but if the new style is overriding something in the old style, then we do want this one to come second. Let's save this. Come back and get rid of all these extra pieces we created. And then I'm going to clear formatting to make sure that the old formatting, these three words, yep, to make sure the old formatting that we just manually applied doesn't count here. All right, so this is going to be range one. And let's go back to 
these and run it. All right, so that's our first run. We looked for the word three, these, and we bolded it. Now we're going to start at row two, column one, and we're going to look for the word words. And the expectation is when I run this, that it's going to copy the text into cell A3 with both the word these and the word words bolded. And that is exactly what happened. I love it when it actually comes together. So to go back to this, originally we were creating a new value, setting the text of that value, and then bolding the desired word. But that doesn't retain previous formatting because all we're doing is getting the text and then setting. That's it. In order to get the existing formatting into the new value, we need to get each run from that rich text value, loop through each run, and apply the text styling of that run to the same word or phrase or substring. That's it. So it's a pretty simple concept once seen. But that's why it's a little bit tricky is recognizing that the original script is not is not even overriding. It's creating a new string each time and applying the new formatting to it. But what we need to do is loop through all of the existing formatting first. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do all those social media things, like, subscribe, share. I'm also trying to be very active in the comments. You can also connect with me on email, my website, LinkedIn, X slash Twitter, and then I am a Google product expert on the official forums. In addition, I do provide individual one-on-one -on -one consulting as needed. You can contact me uh, for that if you need a larger project.